Let's take a look at managing user mailboxes in Exchange using PowerShell. So the first thing is you either need to be working inside of the Exchange management shell or have an Exchange PowerShell session open. So you can see here that I have an Exchange PowerShell session open. So the first thing we'll take a look at is creating a mailbox for a user that already exists in Active Directory. So to retrieve the user, we'll use the get a to user commandlet. So just to validate this user does exist, and you can see that it, this user does not have an email address property in Active Directory. So to create the mailbox for the user, we use the enable mailbox commandlet and give it the name of the user and then optionally what database we want to use. And that will set the email address policy in Active Directory. So we'll validate that again using the get a to user commandlet. And then we can validate that that mailbox does exist using the get mailbox commandlet in Exchange. So then to create a mailbox for a user that does not exist, we use the new mailbox commandlet. And this will create a user in Active Directory as well as a mailbox in Exchange. So we have to specify the password as well as the name, user principal name, first name, last name of the user. And then optionally the database as well as telling it to reset the password on next logon. So go ahead and splat these to the mailbox variable and pass them to the new mailbox commandlet. And if you're not familiar with splatting, check out our SNP on PowerShell splatting. And so that created a mailbox in Exchange, and we can validate that using the get mailbox commandlet. And then also a user in Active Directory, and we'll validate that using the get a user commandlet. So then another common thing that we'll need to edit on mailboxes are the email addresses. So if we use the get mailbox commandlet and then look at the email address property, we can see that by default, this user has one email address. And that's because uh, my email address policy specifies only one email address. If for some reason we wanted to change this email address, we would need to use the set mailbox commandlet. And I'll again splat these settings to a variable. So I'm specifying the name of the mailbox and then setting the email address policy enabled to false. And that allows me to add email address to this mailbox that is not in the email address policy. And then of course, I'm specifying the email address using the email addresses parameter. So now if we look at the email addresses property again, using the get mailbox commandlet, we can see that that email address was changed. And since the email addresses property of the mailbox is a multi-valued property, setting it simply replaces everything that's there. So we can add and remove from the email addresses policy using this hash table add remove notation. So I've got that splatted here in the new bender variable. So I'm specifying the identity again, and I'm setting the email address policy enabled to false. Um, in this case, it already is false, but I'm just leaving that there just so we you remember to set that to false. And then to add an email address, we use the add equals and then specify the email address. And then you notice on the first of the two email addresses that I'm adding, I have the SMTP in caps followed by the colon. That specifies that that address is the primary SMTP address. And then I've got the remove after the semicolon, and I'm removing the email address that we just added in. So I'm going to splat these and pass them to the set mailbox commandlet. And we can look at that mailbox again using the get mailbox commandlet and piping it to the format list to look at just the email addresses property. And we can see that this user now has two email addresses. So the one that we added earlier was removed. And the second one is the primary email address because it has the SMTP followed by the colon in caps. So if we want to remove a mailbox from Exchange but leave the user in Active Directory, we use the disable mailbox commandlet and specify the name of the user. And in this case, I'm also specifying the confirm false flag so that it doesn't prompt me. So now we can validate that the user does still exist using the get a to user commandlet. And we can also check the mailbox and we'll find that the mailbox doesn't exist. So in this case, the red error is good. That's what we wanted. So if we want to remove the user from Exchange and Active Directory with one command, we use the remove mailbox commandlet. Give it the name of the user. And in this case, I'm also specifying the confirm false flag so that it doesn't prompt me. So now we'll find that if we look for the user in Active Directory using the get a to user commandlet, 
that they don't exist. So the red error is good here. And we'll check exchange using the get mailbox commandlet. And user doesn't exist there either. So the red error in this case is good. So that's how you manage user mailboxes in Exchange using PowerShell.